And here we are now at the giant unifying conclusive result, the general Stokes theorem, a theorem that is dizzying in its generality. It goes like this. If f is a k form and omega is a k-dimensional set, so, uh, oh, sorry, k plus one-dimensional set. Whoops, I messed up. They have to be um, one different k plus one dimensional set. And then you also have to throw in some junk about f should be is sufficiently differentiable and omega should be, you know, sufficiently smooth and have nice boundaries and stuff. Um, but then look at how amazingly succinct the resulting formula is. The integral of f over the boundary is the integral of df over the whole set. That simple basic formula encapsulates like almost everything that we spent time working on in this course. It's the fundamental theorem of calculus, it's uh, Green's theorem and Gauss's theorem and Stokes theorem and the divergence theorem and everything all rolled into one. Okay and so uh, in this in this picture on, on, on the left side we've got a k form on a k dimensional set. On on the right side here we've got a k plus one form on a k plus one dimensional set. So this is a deep theorem about what happens when you move between dimensions. How do you move between dimensions? And so we saw from, from this formula here by the addition of the dx that happens when you apply d, we see that d increases dimension. You go, you go one level up. Um, however, the other operator that's going on here is the boundary. The boundary operator decreases dimension. It goes the opposite direction. And this formula shows you that there's some kind of fundamental equivalence between on the one side the boundary operator which is a geometric operation. It's, it's defined purely in terms of sets and stuff. And on the other hand this um, differential operator and this is a purely analytic operation. It has nothing to do with geometry but somehow Fundamentally, they're the same thing. It's crazy. And there's some interesting um, consequences and, and related facts that go with this. So for instance, consider the following observation. Closed surfaces have no boundary. Now, if you remember what the um, definition of a closed surface is. A closed surface is defined to be a surface that is the boundary of some solid region. So in other words, what I'm saying is that if you start with something that's a boundary of a region, closed surface, and you take its boundary, you get nothing. And this is true for any um, set. Right, You start with a ball, you take its boundary, you get a sphere. The, you take the boundary of the sphere and like, oh, sphere ain't got no boundary. You get nothing. Okay. Um, so this is commonly written as saying that the boundary operator applied twice is zero. Now, other observation. If we look at applying the differential operator twice to any form. Well, let's see. If f is just a regular old scalar function, then what does d look like? It looked like gradient and then curl. So this is um, looking at the curl of the gradient of f. So we apply d once and we get a gradient. We apply it again and we get a curl. And there was a theorem 
that the curl of the gradient is equal to zero. Um, now what happens if we start with a one form, aka a vector field? Well, if we apply d twice to a vector field, let's see. The first time we apply it, we get the curl of the vector field. And then when we apply it again, we move up to the divergence. And we saw also that it's a theorem that this is equal to zero. So these are the ones that we said, um, these go by the names of uh, gradients are irrotational. And um, curl fields are incompressible. That's the physics interpretation of, of what's going on here. Um, but if you look at the math, both of these follow from the equality of mixed partial derivatives. Uh, oops, I messed that one up there. When you do the actual computation, that's the thing that makes them both work. And that leads to the conclusion that d squared is equal to zero. So we only checked it for these, these two particular cases, looking at uh, forms in R3, differential forms in R3. But it turns out it's always true. And it's always true because mixed partials are equal. So somehow, somehow the fact that boundaries don't have boundaries is equivalent to the equality of mixed partial derivatives. And we can kind of see that uh, these two observations are equivalent by looking at Stokes' theorem. Oh, whoops, equivalent. Um, so if I look at the integral of the boundary of the boundary of omega of f. Stokes' theorem says that I can move one of those boundary operators up into the integrand as a d. And then it says I can do it again. And so this one on the left is saying that this is, this is the integral over 0 of f because I've got um, the boundary squared at 0. And then on the right side, I've got that this is always going to be 0 because it's the integral over omega um, of 0. So all of these are 0, and it's because of the same fundamental reason that unites all of them. And so going back to what I said about how this ties together a geometric operation with an analytical operation, this makes uh, various things that you've probably noticed earlier in your calculus career quite formalized. So for example, the boundary of a ball is equal to a sphere. The derivative of 4 thirds pi r cubed is 4 pi r squared. And that is the surface area formula for a sphere. And that's not a coincidence. So congratulations, you've just reached the end of calculus and the beginning of all the rest of really cool math that's out there. I hope you enjoyed it.